Is it a case of racist policing? After being unlawfully detained by police on six separate occasions, Sydney solicitor Adam Hooder is now seeking record damages against the New South Wales police in a civil case that may end up costing the state millions of dollars. Mr Hooder, who lives in southwestern Sydney, says he cannot walk in his own neighbourhood at night out of fear that he will be pulled over and possibly assaulted by police. Adam Hooder is a man of Middle Eastern appearance. He's taking on the police in a landmark case to put an end to the police harassment he claims is becoming a trend in the Bankstown area. Sharon O'Neill reports. It started out as a normal evening for Adam Hooder, his brother Sam and brother-in-law Muhammad Hawa. They were on their way to a regular prayer meeting at the Regent's Park Mosque. On the same evening, two plainclothes police officers from Bankstown Police Station were on patrol in an unmarked car, on the lookout for any groups of young Middle Eastern males following a number of robberies in the Chester Hill area. The suspects were in their late teens to early 20s and were armed with knives. It was just after 8pm that Constable Bernard Underwood and Detective Senior Constable Philip Taylor spotted Adam Hooder and his companions. We were walking, walking home and suddenly a car just swerved into our path and two guys emerged from the car, plain clothes, and one guy, the younger guy, screamed out, hey, you guys, come over here and provide me with some ID. So I answered, I said, well, who are you and why do you require our IDs? He said, look, don't be a smart ass. I'm a police officer. I want your IDs. OK, well, I said, that's fine. We're happy to provide them, but please explain your basis. What's your basis for your request? He said, I told you, just give me the ID. I don't have to explain anything to you. Despite being the wrong age, the men were eventually informed they were suspects in a robbery. But when Officer Taylor told Adam Hooder he was not under arrest, he started to leave. He didn't get far. I got grabbed by the younger officer, thrown against the police, police car, and my arm was twisted behind my back. He took out his handcuffs and he crushed the handcuffs on my wrist. And, and then he started to assault me and to say some derogatory words, start abusing me. And then it went on for the next hour. The police called for backup, and before long, two more police cars were on the scene, bringing five additional officers. Um, I've never encountered anything like this before in my life, and um, just a simple walk from the mosque back home in my neighbourhood. Uh, just petrified. At the time when Adam was handcuffed, we got our phones out to take some pictures and then they grabbed it off us and um, made us sit down to, next to the gutter for at least an hour. Were you scared? I'm very scared. They grabbed, our, grabbed my head, just chucked it into the tree, pushed it forwards and backwards, you know, just um, abusing us. Adam Hooter was detained by the police while his relatives, despite being told they were robbery suspects, were let go. Not one question, not one single question asked about any robbery when they were adamant that we were robbery suspects. I was taken to the police station, not a single question about a robbery. Nothing. In September 2010, I was sitting in this room with my children watching television. The phone rang. I raced out to Bankstown. Adam had been arrested. Adam Hooter was charged with resisting arrest and failing to comply with a police direction and was placed in a cell at Bankstown Police Station. He was in considerable pain from the way he had been handcuffed. I went down in the cells. He was locked in a tiny cell and his hands, uh, his arms, his hands were red, his arms were red um, and he was obviously in a poor condition. Adam has serious cardiac problems and he's a diabetic and uh, he was in a poor, poor state. 
bloodied but unbowed. I got him released on bail, and he was a sorry sight. I put my arm around him, I grabbed him out of the police station. We were crossing the road, and the arresting police pulled up in a car near us as we crossed on the pedestrian crossing, and they were pointing at him and laughing, smug. When the case eventually came to Burwood Court in October last year, the charges against Adam Hooder and his relatives were dismissed. Magistrate Michael John Connell told the court... At the end of the day, here were three men of Middle Eastern appearance walking along a suburban street, for all the police knew, minding their own business. The place they were in could not have raised a reasonable suspicion they were involved in the robberies. There was just as high a probability that the men had done nothing wrong and, more importantly, were not carrying a knife or knives. He went on to criticise the police, saying... The officers were acting beyond their powers. They were not acting in execution of their duty. The police were in court that day. The magistrates said they didn't know the law and started to deliver them a lecture. They got up and walked out of the courtroom. The incident in September 2010 was the fifth time Adam Hooder had been illegally arrested or detained by the police. But it wasn't the last. One year later, it happened again. I was arrested under, under the suspicion that I was involved in a robbery again. Uh, and I was let go, ultimately, at the scene. After I was pulled over, after I was surrounded by more than half a dozen police officers, more after I was surrounded by over four police cars who had their sirens on, and I was made a spectacle of in my, in my own neighbourhood. The basic entitlement of civilised human existence is the right to the peaceful enjoyment of your life. Adam is entitled to go to his church, believe in his God and walk home in peace. And he is being interfered with and police are trying to change things, trying to make the innocent person vulnerable to examination and bullying. And he hasn't accepted the bullying and I'm proud that he hasn't. These last two wrongful arrests are now the subject of a civil claim against the New South Wales Police. Adam Hooder is seeking record damages. I've been arrested and subjected to the worst type of treatment by police six times. OK, so I, I'm not going to sit back and accept it. I'll be doing something about it. It's not the first time this Sydney lawyer has sued the police. His first unlawful arrest happened at Burwood Court in August 2000 just 12 months after he started working as a lawyer for Sydney solicitor Chris Murphy. I sent him out to court to get a case adjourned. We had a client out there, a police officer was talking to the client and not getting on too well. The client was schizophrenic. Adam went over and said, look, just take it a little bit easy with this guy. Another officer intervened, slammed Adam against the wall, arrested him in handcuffs and took him into the police station. Ultimately, they charged me. They had the audacity to charge me for resist arrest assaulting a police officer. When we got into court, I said, didn't it strike you that this man you arrested was a, was a lawyer? And the policeman said, nah. He said, I thought he was an ethnic in a suit. That was a very bad start. The magistrate wasn't impressed at all. He, he asked the prosecutor to reconsider his position and gave him a break. He rang his superiors, told them it was going dreadfully, and the matter was withdrawn. I ultimately sued and was awarded $145,000 plus costs in that case. When damages were awarded, Justice Cooper in the Supreme Court said, I'm comfortably satisfied on the probabilities that in prosecuting the plaintiff for assaulting him, Constable Stebbing well knew that the offence had not been committed and that he was motivated to do so solely out of spite or ill will towards the plaintiff because the plaintiff had stood up to his unjustified, menacing and rude conduct. Some people say I'm anti-police. No, I'm not anti-police. Far from it. I understand the importance of, poli of police work and I understand the importance of good policemen out there. But it's, I've seen more bad than good, in, in the bank, especially coming out of the Bankstown Police. Uh, and you only have to walk the streets and speak to people who have had dealings with police and you can hear for, your, from, for yourself. You know, I'm bombarded with complaints about police every single day. This is a rare gathering for Adam Hooder and his companions. Every one of them has been subjected to an unlawful arrest or harassment by police. 
and now they will not walk the streets at night in their own neighbourhood. I had a police officer in my face telling me whether I thought I was a tough boy. And I was thinking, you know, why are we being treated like this? You know? And then I was searched, um, humiliated pretty much, yeah, very embarrassing. In 2007, another incident occurred in the area. This time, it involved someone much more well-known than Adam Huda. Uh, I had a meeting outside this cafe once with uh, a former Bulldog, former international, Hazem al -Mazri, and we were detained and arrested here, surrounded by half a dozen cops, a dozen cops, four police cars, sirens, uh, and again, it was utterly humiliating. New South Wales Police declined to speak to 7.30, saying it was inappropriate to comment while there were legal proceedings pending. The department also declined to provide the total cost to taxpayers of the failed prosecutions involving Adam Huda. In a written statement, a spokesman for the New South Wales Police said, the New South Wales Police Force has standard operating procedures to deal with failed prosecutions. Local area commands have in place prosecutions committees where all failed prosecutions, including any adverse comments by magistrates or judges, are reviewed and assessed. In relation to Constable Stebbing, the spokesman said an appropriate level of management action was taken to prevent a repetition of the incident. He's afraid to go for a walk. I mean, a man afraid of walking down the street. But if you've been arrested six times, it's probably easy to understand. He's certainly significantly traumatised. And I'm just hoping that he won't lose his will to win. Publicly, Adam Huda is showing no signs of that. On a personal level, I don't want them to do that to me ever again. You know, thank God for the courts. Because at the moment, that's my only avenue in righting the wrongs. Do you think it will help if you win? Will it make a difference? Absolutely. Uh, I hope